God morning, God morning, God. Father's Day morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day. And welcome to the Rise as One Kingdom podcast, episode 27. Man, I can see my eyes. I don't want to open this morning. So like, let's go, let's go, let's go. The dogs keep waking me up at 5, 5.30 in the morning every day. Normally my schedule is like midnight to 6 o'clock, boom, and I'm ready to roll. God morning, Joseph. These dogs keep waking me up. They're messing with my schedule. I was out late last night with Vernon. Thank you all the guys from the softball field this week. Went over and showed love to Vernon, and that's what they were being shown this week. Connection is the key, Joseph. Connection is the key to sobriety. As I roll into six months of no alcohol, the clarity of purpose is dialing it in. Two weeks to the, to, to the renewal of a right spirit event coming up here. God morning, Richard. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Joseph. Man, Grandfather's Day. Happy Grandfather's Day. I know Joseph's got grandkids. I know Richard's got grandkids. Happy Grandfather's Day. But this morning when I got this morning, I was, like, I was like, Dad, thank you for your day. I went out there, got grounded, as I've been preaching and teaching about, getting my feet into the ground. And I thank you for just one more day to do your will. My whole life, I made it about me and my will until I realized I needed more. I can't do it, Darren. But I know a guy. His name is Yeshua. And this guy showed us how to live as humans. That's how much God loves us. That's how much our father loves us. Listen, we all might have a different mother, but we have the same father. And this is what we have to realize as humans as we connect, create, and contribute. As we said, connection is the key to sobriety. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. It's connection. It's connection. I'll say it again. It's connection. Happy Father's Day, Darren. Man, my hairs my arms were standing on end this morning. I got this morning. I sent my dad this post this morning. All these pictures from all the last couple of years. We went down and celebrated his 85th birthday a couple of years ago. It was a family. We surprised him. He hit for the cycle in his softball game at 85 years old. As all his family's cheering him on. Single, double, triple, home run. All in the same game as we're cheering him. You can't write a script like that. That's God. I'm not sure who you're following and what team you're on. A couple weeks ago, I was like, man, look at all these people. They're buying all these jerseys over here and, uh, and, and this jersey over there and that sports team in football and baseball, basketball. And everybody's saying, I'm proud to wear this jersey. And as I'm going through this process, what pops up on my feed on Facebook? A jersey of Jesus. The cross. That's how much he loves you. That's what the cross stands for. How much our Father loves us. This is where we don't understand it. It was like, oh, I, I thought this life was about like going out there. I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to go have some fun. I'm going to drink and party. I'm going to travel and go on vacations. I'm going to make life about me. This is what we thought growing up. And as we get older, and guess what happens? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding sets in. And from that place, you're like, oh, I think I may have messed this up. 10, 20, 30 years of messing up life. And then all of a sudden we go, this is the true meaning of life. And I see Richard at peace right now in his life. Because it doesn't matter if you're first or you're last, you will get the same rewards. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And that's why every relay race there's four runners. The best runner runs last. So it doesn't matter how you start. It's how you finish the game of life. Make sure you give it everything that you've got. He doesn't want anything in the tank. He doesn't want nothing in your closet. He doesn't want anything in your safe. He wants you to put it on the field of life. This is how we grow. This is how we connect. 
as we're going to connect here in a couple of weeks, 13 days from today, we will be gathering. People from all over the country are flying into Little Matthews, Virginia. Why? Because this place is love. This place is peace. Virginia's motto as a state is what? Who knows? Virginia's for lovers. And you first have to love yourself. So many of us live in guilt and shame of the things that we've done. We can't even love ourselves. How are you supposed to love somebody else? When we can't love ourselves. So welcome to the Rise as One Kingdom Podcast. We love you, God. Thank you for this kingdom. You get to share it with us here on this earth. What a beautiful experience this last week has been. As I took... Guys, you can't make this up. This is crazy. I'm driving down the road, guys on the side of a road, in a wheelchair, asking for help, begging for help, pleading for help. I pick him up, put him in my car, bring him downtown, get a bite to eat. I can look into his eyes. They're all glossy. I can see he's addicted to alcohol. I'm looking at the old self in me. And God says, I want you to help this man. (laughs) God, don't you understand? I got this, 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 and this going on. He says, I don't care. Joseph David, assist this man, because no man gets left behind. And yesterday, I trimmed up his beard, got him all the way down to, and I trimmed up myself yesterday too, got it all cleaned up here. Took all his, when I first met him, he had this wild hair, looked like Albert Einstein, his wild beard. Looked like the, the caveman from the Geico commercial. So easy a caveman can do, he's all cleaned up. People don't even recognize him anymore. I bring him to the softball field. People just gave him nothing but love. That's connection. That's sobriety. He went 40 days of sobriety. It's like Jesus went 40 days in the desert. What's your desert you have to go through? Some of us don't want to face the desert. They get halfway through. I, I, let me get some water. Let me get some food. We can't even honor. Just like Jesus said to the apostles. You guys... Wait over here for me. I'm going to go over here and pray to the Father. So he can get his discernment in his prayer closet, in his prayer room, on top of a prayer mountain, instead of a prayer temple, as I'm going to share with you here in a minute, of in Minnesota where Kathy and I went into this little room and praying for it. Praying for your goodness. Praying for your connection. Praying for your love. They silence those uh, messages here popping up as people are waking up. Like, Joe, how come you keep waking up coming out? I didn't want to wake up today, man. My eyes are all heavy. They're just opening now. I can feel like the eyes were like closed. And they got the goo on them. They're all shut up. I'm like, can I just stay home and go to sleep, Dad? My father and your father said, get up. You got your arms. You got your legs. You can breathe. You can walk. You can talk. Go down there and share the whose team are you on. Whose team are you on? Who's in your dugout? Who's fighting with you? Where's that connection? As we learned this week on the softball field, as Vernon was watching on. Whose team are you on? Who are you worshiping? We're going to talk about this week. And the last one is Father's Day. Whose team? And worship. Those are the three things we're going to talk about today. And Father's Day, if I sent that post out to Dad, praise to the Father up in heaven, giving thanks. Wrote that post to make sure you are anchoring the experiences you're going through in this life. We are required to anchor Julio. Happy Father's Day, brother. What we are going through in this life. Documented. Write it down. That's why I love putting my stuff on Facebook. When people think, like, there's Joe putting all stuff. No, I'm creating a history. I'm creating a story. I'm creating a, a whole thing I can go back and look at to help me remember. As you guys can see, I get a lot done in the day. I can't remember what I do in the morning and the afternoon sometimes. I get so much stuff done. And that's just not me. That's Jesus and God working through me because I'm on their team. My own accord. I would have been off sedating in the woods. Let me get a couple of booze. Chill out over here. I remember one time we were at, uh, working at Pitney Bowes. Went out to lunch. The guy's like, hey, have a drink. Said, no, I don't, I don't like to drink at work. I no, have a drink. Let's, let's have the, all right, I'll have one. Guess what? 
I love work. I never even went back. I said, no, if I'm drinking, I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm in. I'm, I'm on that team. I'm on a drinking team. Let me just go drink all day now. Sedate with the alcohol. I don't want to face reality. Reality hurts. Pain and suffering. All the agony. I say, nope, I'm not doing that. So I stopped doing any of those things. Partying before softball games. Partying before going golfing. Partying while at work. And I see a lot of people, they go out. Partying at lunchtime. How do you go back to work? With that spirit in you. That's why they call it spirits, right? It changes your spirit man into something different. Your spirit woman. You become a different person as we drink. So God morning, everybody. Always good to see you. Team Jesus, absolutely. So I was, I was sitting there just thinking about this. I'm like, why can these people buy all these jerseys? They're like, oh my gosh, these guys said $56 billion a year are spent in merchandise for sports. Soccer, hockey, football, baseball, basketball. And I saw that. I started hearing all these numbers and stuff. I'm like, well, whose team are you on? I asked myself. I said, I'm on Team Jesus. Wherever he's going, whatever he's leading me to do, I'm just going to connect every day. Whatever he gives me for an assignment, that's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go be obedient. Because obedience is better than sacrifice, the Bible says. And the next day, this jersey shows up on my feed. I said, that's it right there. That's whose team I'm on. I'm not sure whose team you're on. Because we're going to learn. We have one or two choices where we're going. The Lamb's Book or Lake of Fire. We have a choice. Every day. We can get up and have a choice of what we're going to do. So check this out. Let's get into the content here. <clears throat> Man. I love this game of life and how to play it. But you can't play the game successfully unless you know the rules. So this week's word of the day. I know you guys are getting uh, tips off now. You're like, wait, Joe, what's the word of the day? I know you got a word on the way down. Appreciation. What are you grateful for? What do you appreciate? I appreciate the house being sold this week. They keep telling me on the 5th, it's going to be on the on the 17th. Now they're telling me on the 18th, they keep pushing it off. And all my creditors will be saying, hey, where's that money to pay me off? See how this game cycle works? We're reliant upon each other. That connection, that's where you're going to get the sobriety. <clears throat> so... Today's first topic is Father's Day. What is the origins of Father's Day? I woke up this morning and said, well, what is Father's Day? Why are we celebrating it? Is there some places to go create more commerce? As we were talking about a couple weeks ago, and Memorial Day. It's about barbecuing and grilling. It's about honoring the war dead. My good friend, Louis Russo, right there in World War II. It's about honoring the war dead. Here on Father's Day... It can be traced back to the early 20th century, a story that starts with a woman named Sonora Smart Dodd in Spokane, Washington, who was inspired by her widowed father. She and her five siblings were raised by the father, a Civil War veteran and single parent. According to history, Dodd wanted to establish an official date equivalent to Mother's Day, because Mother's Day was already established back then. Proposed the idea to local churches, YMCA's, and even government officials. The first Father's Day was celebrated on June 19, 1910 in Spokane. So this is just where it started up in Washington, right? So that was the only one. Nobody else was celebrating except Spokane, Washington, because this woman decided she wanted to honor her father, a Civil War veteran. But it wasn't until several years later that it started to be gained popularity in other parts of the country. 1916, President Woodrow Wilson honored a day and unfurling a flag in Spokane. And in 1924, President Coolidge urged states to recognize the day. So all the way back in 1920, they just started recognizing Father's Day. The mothers were always, always being recognized. I'd be interested to know when that started. Because the mothers, you guys, I believe, have the toughest job out there. So I still salute, like I said last week, I honor all the mothers. It was officially recognized by President Nixon, Tricky Dick, all the way in 1972 when we were growing up, Joseph. Darren, this is when we were growing up, 1972. They finally made it a national holiday. So let's tip our cap to Sonora and all those that have helped make Father's Day a national holiday. That's the history of Father's Day. 
1910, one person stood up and said, Hey, I want to recognize my father. Drink your lemon water. I want to recognize my father. I want to honor him. So as I was going deeper on this this morning, as I'm laying in the bed, and these dogs woke me up at 5.30, and I got the crust coming out of my eyes. I said, what is Father's Day? Why do we honor certain things? Why do we appreciate the word of the day certain things? How come some things we take for granted? And all of a sudden it was like, the daily things that we get to experience, the people that brought us into this world, the Bible tells us, honor your mother, honor your father, regardless of your relationship with your father, if your father gave you up for adoption at birth, maybe you were in foster care and you're upset at your parents, we still are required to honor them. They brought us here into this earth. They too have their own situations going on that we cannot fault them. But as we go through this journey of life, the key as we go through these holidays is to not just have another day off. Because when I worked in corporate America, all I cared about, I had a day off. I can drink more because I don't have to wake up the next day. That was my logic. It's probably some of your logic still to this day. Because I was honoring the spirit of alcohol, not the spirit of Christ Jesus. Father God, our Father who brought us here into this earth, chose you at birth. I don't know if you guys know this, one in 100 million chances of you being born. One in 100 million. How come we're not appreciative of more things? Why do we want instant gratification instead of earning our keep? Back in the day, these Civil War guys, they earned their keep. They plowed the fields, fought, came home, brought home the food to the family, honored the mother for Mother's Day, honored their children, hit the bed, and did it all over again. They would go from sun up to sundown, and probably still had to do all their little odds and ends before they hit the hay. That could be exhausting for most people. But a man with a purpose will flourish. A man without a purpose will perish. Purpose, flourish. Perish, no purpose. This is what's happening to society today if you're paying attention. They have no discipline. They don't want to get up and do anything. They got handouts all over the place. Listen, back in the day, there were no handouts. You either went out and got it or you had none. You weren't taken from your neighbor because back then they will take you out. <clears throat> A little off topic, but still relevant. Make sure we're celebrating the holidays that we come in contact with throughout as you go forward this journey of life, it's not about a day off and, and the celebration, the barbecues. Those things are cool. Those are good. It's more about the honor and the appreciation is what he's showing us today. So the opposite of addiction is connection. And this is where I want to dive in a little bit about the three C's. So I was going through this men's entrepreneurial group for many years. And I unlocked my code of connect, create, and contribute, which was in the book, The Rise is One, The Spiritual Awakening. I talked about it in there. And the key is, is that every one of us is a creator. We were born to create. And when we're not creating, we're taking away from our gifts. It's almost like sitting on the couch and expecting to get better exercise in, better shape, get in better shape without exercise. It's almost doing, like doing that. So if we're not creating, we are doing a disservice to who? Your father here on Father's Day. Then you have connection. We are born to connect. You ever see the babies when they're born, the first thing the, the nurses do, they put the baby on the mom's chest. Out here, away from the, the body, it starts crying. And as soon as they put the baby on the mom's chest, they feel protected. They feel connected. 
making sense now. I can hear some of you getting this. And once we become connected, we become sober-minded. But left to our own accord there, and this is where many of us have been messing up, Richard. Julio, this is where many of us have messed up, Joseph. We disconnected ourselves. For whatever reason, doesn't matter. But that disconnection creates sedation. Creates the enemy giving us all these thoughts that are not of you. So first we must create. Then we connect. When we have those two things and we've mastered it, we feel like, yes, I got it. Now we go back and we contribute. And that was my three C's. The I unlocked after a year and a half of doing the work. Every single day I get up and I do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Until the Father showed me. This is who you are. Create, connect, contribute. That's what I want you to do the rest of your life. And as I did that, I became more alive. I got more energy. I got more invigorated. I got more sober-minded. And I was sober to the point where I'm full. I'm full spiritually, mentally, physically. Everything's full. My love meter's full. My amazing wife, Kathy, my goodness, she's just like on fire. And that ignites my fire. And when you put two flames together, guess what? It gets bigger. So whose team are you on? As we cannot win the war alone, connection, as we learned the last two weeks, yes, you will win battles alone. But you're not going to win the war. The war takes a team. It takes we. We. Not me. Me is strife. We is life, as we learned a couple weeks ago. We are to win the war. That's our purpose. Coming together as one. That's why the enemy keeps trying to divide us, separate us, conquer us. Or you guys are left, you guys are right, you guys are black, you guys are white. I grew up in this. Darren, we grew up in this. There are crosses in our high school setting on fire and people were stabbing each other, blacks against the whites. And now we have it between political parties fighting against each other. I'm blocking you and you're not my friend no more. You're out. Guess who's winning? Not you. Not me. The enemy. He wants division. He doesn't want connection. My question to you today, do you want to get connected to yourself, then to others, your family, your community? Because if we go it alone, there's a handful of people that can go it alone. They might be a little bit on the, on the tipsy side, but some people can do it. I just heard this. I was at an auction yesterday. They were auctioning off the real estate and cars and the whole contents of this house, house because the wife died first. Six months later, the husband died. There was nobody left. They were just, everything was getting rid of. Whoever was left to the estate, they were just getting rid of everything. That's how important connection is. That'll keep you sober-minded. Us men, we don't do well separated. We are to be in a tribe, on a team. Whose team are you on? Are you on the alone team? I can promise you, you will get some dark thoughts in your head. That's why they put the people in solitary confinement. They know they will go crazy in there. Here, are you going crazy? Take some pills. Let us give you 15 pills in the morning and 15 pills at night, little Garcia. Until he found the book of life. And then he said that cell became my what? My worship place, my light, my everything. And eventually, his freedom. That's how you find out who you are. By doing the work. Because somebody can tell you who you're going to become. Until you become it, you'll know for yourself. That's where Godfidence comes from. From you doing the work. Let me pay you. As, as Darren's brother did one day. He came up and said, hey, Joe, I need a job. I'm doing a siding job in Waterbury, Connecticut. He comes walking up to me. Hey, man, I need work. All right, cool, man. Do this. He went and paid a guy to go do the work for him. He was doing himself a disservice. 
In order to be served, you first have to serve yourself. You have to get the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to pass those traits along. So, whose team are we on? We spend $56 billion a year on sportswear, promoting our favorite player, yet we cannot invest 5, 10, 15 minutes per day giving praise and thanksgiving in our private room or our prayer closet to the Almighty Creator, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. Kathy and I were up in Minnesota a few years back, and then, then <clears throat> her, ne um, her nephew was getting married to now our niece, and they had this little prayer shed. Shaped just like a church, a little temple on top, a cross on top. I was like, what is that? That's pretty cool. Said, oh, that's our worship little area. We go over there. It's got a little Bible in there, a little sit-down area. You just go in there and have that one-on-one -on -one time. If you cannot invest 5, 10, and 15 minutes every day. Yes, every day. I know me and Richard run a call every day for over an hour. That's a little bit extreme for most people can't handle it. But if you can't get 5 minutes in, 10 minutes in. I recommend 15 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time. As this morning, I had the one-on-one -on -one time with God. I had my feet, bare feet in the ground, watching the sunrise, and then I was just talking to him. Say, happy your day, Father, is what my conversation sounded like this morning. Thank you for just one more day on this earth for me to do your will. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Well, we went into that little temple, and Kathy and I went there together, and we worshiped together. We connected together. We connected to the source energy. That's where most people are missing the mark. You're not connecting it to the source. You're connecting it to the wall. Therefore, we lose our charge. I don't have any more energy. I'm tired by the afternoon. I got one guy that works with me now, 21 year, 20 years old. He'll come in like 7 o'clock in the morning. By 2 o'clock, he's done. He's like, I'm out. I can't work no more. I'm tired. And here I am at 17 years old. 8 o'clock in the morning. No, 7 o'clock in the morning back then to 11 o'clock at night. I was working a full-time job at the Colonial Truck Stop, Darren. 3 to 11. I went to school from 7 to 2. That was his schedule. 7 to 2 on his work schedule. That was only my first shift. Then I go into the second ship, and here I am, all these years later, on the same schedule. Because that was the habit that I created. Most of it out of necessity that I didn't want to be not enough. Because many of us can relate to this because we grow up with zero. Most of you guys here on, online today grew up with zero. That gives you a lot of drive to go out and create something. To connect with others to help you get what both of you want. And then when you contribute back, everybody feels good. Isn't that crazy? Connect, create, and contribute. Since a year and a half later, after doing the work to unlock my code of my life purpose. What is your code? And whose team are you on? Who are you rooting for? Who are you investing your monies and your dollars to, to sponsor someone that's fighting for you? Are you worshiping LeBron James, Derek Jeter, Michael Jordan, Joe Montana? Who are you worshiping? It's going to be the next topic. We'll get there in a minute. <clears throat> Why do this daily? Fear and gratitude cannot occupy, occupy the same space we require to create the space for ourselves to grow. This is why you must do it daily, 5, 10, 15 minutes. Give yourself the opportunity. If you have to wake up a little bit earlier, do that. I can promise you, as you start to connect, as I was explaining to Keith a little while ago, Keith, you have to do this every day. And after two days, what do you do? He came back. Joe, it's not happening. Got morning, Miguel. Joe, it's not happening. Happy Father's Day. I, I've been doing the work for two days. I'm not, I'm not getting no connection. I'm, I'm not hearing nothing. Nothing's happening. For you deep thinkers out there, it takes you a little bit longer to get that connection. Those that are open, you can do it within 30, 40 days, sometimes sooner. But the deep thinkers, it might take them a little bit longer because the mind has to override itself in order to connect. And this is where we miss the mark. Says, I want it now. Can I have it right now, Joseph? No, you got to do the work. A year and a half for me. I'm a hard head. You got to get through there. You got to break that 
It's an ice breaking game. You gotta take out the little chunks of ice and before the whole thing falls out. I just kept going, tick, 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 take out one cube. And all of a sudden, they all fell through. <clears throat> surrendering to a higher power, for me it was surrendering to God, is like having a personal bodyguard. Because once you surrender to him, I was like, okay, cool. I got Jesus on one side, God on the other side, and I'm just rolling down the middle of the Bronx. I'm not worried about anybody now. If I was walking down there by myself, I'd be in fear. I see the people with the guns, the knives. You got the gang members, and they're all just staring at you, cat calling to you, good morning, Missy. But when you got the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit rolling with you, it's a whole different level of protection. Like my bodyguard, Whitney Houston, right? <clears throat> the Lord promised that if the Israelites followed his instructions, the Lord promised that if the Israelites followed his instructions, the plague would pass over them and not hurt them. The Lord told each Israelite family to sacrifice a perfect male lamb and paint the blood of the lamb over the doorframe of their houses. The Lord told the Israelites to cook and quickly eat the lamb. This is what we are required to do. Put the protection over our houses, put the protection over ourselves, but we cannot do that if we're not connecting, creating, and contributing. This is what we're called to do. And no, you can't buy your way in. Even Vernon yesterday said, I'll, I'll just pay for them to do that. No, Vernon, you do the work. You carry your cross. You be a part of your own salvation. All of you that's hearing this message right now, you're required to build your cross, carry your cross, and maybe I'll even help you build it, carry your cross, and be part of your own salvation. Otherwise, you're not going to be saved. Because eventually you're going to get to that space between 40 and 50 years old and saying, I surrender. I can't do it under my own will. And then we start getting all these demonic thoughts in our heads telling us that we're not enough. The world would be better off without me. Connection. 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 That's the key to sobriety. I see so many people. I remember this one guy used to walk by our house every day on Westville Avenue in Danbury, Connecticut with a 30-pack of beer going down to his bedroom to drink it. That's alone. That's sedation. That's the enemy. That's not getting you to your purpose. We have to connect with each other to stay sober minded. Especially today. Because we know from last week, weak men create tough times. And we're in for some tough times. You see it happening. But don't be in fear of it. Connect with your brothers and sisters who are going where you want to go. Come to the renewal event so you can renew a right spirit within you. You get in the room. I was explaining to the woman this week at the closing <clears throat> for the property coming up. I was signing all the documents. And I was explaining to her the people that are coming and their stories that they're going to share from the stage. She's like... Joe, the hairs of my arms are standing up. And I showed her my arm, and the hairs of my arms were standing straight up. I said, that's the Holy Spirit. That's connection. When you get connected and you're delivering, it's not about you. It's you getting out of the way of you. That's where most of us, most of us are missing the mark. We, we trip over ourselves. When you get out of the way of you, you can allow him to work through you. Now you're on the right team. Sharing the message promoting the good news not promoting the sports figures the actors the actresses putting these pictures up on your wall i mean i used to have all those stupid things on my wall growing up Farrah Fawcett and all those things back in the day like everybody else did and the girls had the scott bales on everything on. we're worshiping the wrong thing is what i believe is what i'm saying here today I'm not sure what you're worshiping today, but early in life, you can get away with it. As we get older and we move forward in this game of life, we have these experiences behind us, Missy. This is where we start to, to say, you know what? What truly do I want and what truly matters to me, my wife, my kids, my family, my husband? I want to honor them. I want to honor Jesus. I want to honor the Creator, the Father. 
We all have the same father. He brought us here. One in a hundred million chances. And you're here. Appreciate is what he was telling me this morning to drive in. Appreciate what I've done for you. Appreciate you can see me. Appreciate that you can hear me right now. I'm speaking, you're hearing. Those little things that we don't appreciate, man, a lot of times they get taken away. <laughs> How fast, it's like food. When you take food away, we've been praying and fasting now, preparing for the event coming up. I'm, I'm starting to double fast now during the weeks. Man, when your stomach starts growling and your body and your starts tingling, because I can promise you, when you get to a place of desperation, you will find a way. You will find a way. There is no doubt in my mind that every one of you has the creative abilities within you. But many times, I just want to pay you to do it for me. It's because we got complacent. Some of us got inheritances. Some of us got bonuses. Some of us have really high-paying jobs. Instead of doing it ourselves, let me be lazy. Let me just chill. And guess what? We dim our light. And all of a sudden the darkness comes in. Then we cry, why me, God? Because you walked away from me. You walked away from the light. You went to the darkness. I can't assist you there. As we said last week, light and darkness cannot occupy the same space. <clears throat> Moving on. So what they did back in the day was they would protect the door jams. They would they put the sacrifice, sacrifice uh, anointing oil over all the doors. What did I do this week? I went around to the entire house that we're moving into. Every single door, every single window. I rebuke any spirit that is not of love and light in the name of Jesus. And I opened up the doors, opened the windows, said you're free to leave. You are forgiven. I told the spirit you're forgiven. They get trapped into that space. They're all alone in these old houses. People talk about these haunted houses and stuff. You can ask them to leave. They will leave. In the name of Jesus, they have to leave. You don't understand the authority that you carry. So whenever they would protect the doors and the windows, that was the, um, the Passover. So when the spirit of death came to the property, it would pass over that one because it knew it was protected by the blood of the lamb. They would put actually blood back in the day of the lamb on the doorposts. I was using the anointing oil. And it would pass over you. Hence, Passover. I know I'm doubling down on some of this content as we humans are required to repetition to reprogram the mind. And this is what I was explaining to Keith the other day. We require the repetition. So in your mind, if you're hearing me say, God morning, Laura, happy Father's Day. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy Father's Day to Jesus and Father God. Absolutely. <clears throat> thank you for that. And I'm praying for you and your sister. So I'm doubling down on the content. And I know for me, whenever I hear somebody repeating something, like, oh, you said that already. You said that already. You said that already. I'm doing it intentionally to make sure we get it programmed in. Because for me, it was a year and a half before I unlocked my code on what I am to do. So what are you are to do? What are you to do, Joseph? What are you to do, Laura, Missy, Darren, Julio, Todd, Dr. Lewis? What are all of you to do? What is the repetition that you require to create the habits that are going to serve you and eventually, his kingdom. Let your will be done, Father Jesus said. <clears throat> That's the reason why doubling down. And repeating some of this content. It's intentional, everybody. Bear with me. <clears throat> now check this out. In Luke 18.25, Jesus is quoted as saying... It is easier to pass a camel through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven. See, I truly believe I've been guided to the gates of heaven my whole life. I've been around people that make a lot of money. I've been around people that are very successful in the business world. But are they getting in? My prayer is that they do. My prayer is that they find 
what we're speaking about here, 27 weeks of this Rise as One Kingdom podcast. I want you to get in. As we'll learn here in a minute, there's only two books. There's a lake of fire and a book of lamb. Jesus quoted as saying, it's easier to pass a camel through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven. Why would he say that? Think about that. We'll continue. And then I started asking myself, <clears throat> why do we want to go to heaven? Why do I want to go to heaven? Why you? Because one of two places. The lake of fire, the pits of hell, or the Lamb's book of life is where we are to be found based upon our choices here on and. Based, just based upon our choices here and the good news if we mess it up. Once, twice, three times we can come before him in praise and worship and repent of our wicked ways and be forgiven by the blood of the perfect sacrificial lamb, Team Jesus. Which team are you on? Are you going to be protected? Never seen a horse pulling a bank. Good one, Richard. I love that. Once we ground ourselves in what is true for you, so instead of living what everybody else wants you to live, what is true for you, Joseph, the fear, the anxiety, the depres depression dissipates. It's like when I was in the military, we would get these big heavy batteries from the field, and there was like 12 batteries in this individual big square box battery. I mean, this thing was heavy. And you will pull out each individual cell is 1.5 volts. We were required when it first came in, put this big discharging machine on it. It would discharge it down to zero and then recharge it back up. This is exactly what we are to do. <clears throat> this is how we start to renew a right spirit so there was no fluctuation. If we don't go back to zero, it can easily fluctuate. And you can, just like your cell phone battery, you should make sure that thing goes all the way back down and all the way back up. Any kind of battery that discharges and recharges, let it go all the way back down and all the way back up. Most of us go halfway and charge it. Halfway, charge it. Halfway, charge it. This is how we live our lives as well. We go halfway and I'm good. And we stop. <clears throat> DC current. <clears throat> DC current flows smoothly. AC current has a lot of noise in it. I don't know if you guys know about this, but I took electronics for 25 years. I used to have oscilloscopes that would measure it. DC would be one perfect line. The AC would go up like this and have all this noise attached to it. And you can see like the fuzzies inside. It's almost like the uh, the thing from the, the hospitals when it shows the heartbeat going across. If you look at it really finely, you can see the noise attached to it. With DC, it's really cl clear and, and direct current. <clears throat> this is exhausting to our physical bodies. Don't do that to ourselves. So whenever we go up and down, it's exhausting. That's why so many people and this young kid has to go to bed after seven, working from seven to two. He's exhausted because he's up and down, up and down, panic, just depressed, high, Red Bull, monster. And they take all these energy drinks and they go up and down, up and down. Then even the kids now are putting alcohol into the Red Bull in the bars. They get that double high. And then guess what? They get that double low. Don't do that to yourself. Become the direct current is the message today. Get on the right team and be the direct current. Where it's... Like I always equate it to a motorboat. I used to have a boat docked up in Canada Lake in Danbury, Connecticut. I used to work the night shift at Pitney Bowes. I would get out in the morning. i get on that boat. And man, there was no waves. No people. No other boats. Nice and smooth, right across the top of the water. Mist coming off the water. The trout were jumping out of the water. It was perfectly smooth. This is how our lives are meant to be lived. And all of a sudden, we get a couple bumps and we start doing this. Give me some alcohol, give me some drugs. Take away the pain. And then we're high, high. I'm good, now I'm high. And the next day we're low dried out, parched, got to drink water and milk, try and replenish the batteries. I hope this is hitting home and making sense to everybody out there. Because as we go through this journey of life and we keep going these highs and lows, eventually the body and the mind says, I'm out. I can't do this. I can't take this no more. I quit. And we quit on ourselves. But when we discharge ourselves and give it everything that we've got every day, 
we become renewed with the right spirit. Otherwise, we're carrying yesterday's spirit into today. That's not discharging your battery all the way. Make sense? Capiche? Isn't my dad say capiche? Understand? Okay. Happy Father's Day, everybody. <clears throat> Moving on here. Topic number three, what are you worshiping? Are you worshiping false idols, musicians, actors, actresses, actresses, sports figures? Those people are cool and they're good people, yet ultimately we are to worship the creator and his creations. You are one of his creations. We are to worship ourselves and give thanks and praise. Not worship in like an ego way, worshiping saying appreciation way. Man, I'm thankful I get to do this. I get to play the game of life today. Some people didn't wake up today. They thought they had more time. Their time has run out. I'll do it tomorrow, they said. Like Joseph is saying here, procrastination is the beast of burden. They said, I'll do it tomorrow. And then for them, tomorrow never came. And now they have regrets. Did they go to the lake of fire? Did they get their name written in the book of Lamb? The Lamb's book of life? To live forever in eternity with him? Or are we down there with so many people's names I'm not going to mention? <clears throat> but the name came to the top of my head. I almost said it. I don't want to offend anybody. For what they did, that's on them. But for I, 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 the, uh, the analogy is like, water, water, give me some water. They're chilling down there. They're not chilling. They're exhausted down there in the lake of fire. Just asking for a very simple sip. Mmm. Of water. It was like that road march I was on in uh, Killeen, Texas. <coughs> Excuse me. All that pound of stuff digging up those yards yesterday. We were on this road march. Seven, eight mile road march with all our gear on. 5,000 feet above sea level. 18 years old. And I'm right behind the drill sergeant, pushing him. Come on, drill sergeant, that's all you got. And I'm pushing him until about mile five. <laughs> I started dropping off. And he said, come on, boy, come on. I got a, little, got a little bit more inspired, right? But man, after that seven-mile road march, and I stayed right on his heels the whole way, that water never tasted so good. Even though it came from a water buffalo, that's what they carry the water in in the military. They put the chlorine in there it tasted nasty they might even had saltpeter in there for all we knew trying to keep us mind focused on our, our rehabilitation of the mind to become a good soldier but that water man it's like having no water that whole march and having that water at the end that's life the living water of life you see that post i posted this week i took vernon after the softball game to a property that his family owned over in Gloucester, Virginia, had an underwater spring. He said, yeah, that's like the spring of life. He says, you can go over there and pray. And as I got down on my knees and I was praying over this water coming out of the ground from God's creation, filling up water bottles with it, drinking out of it, washing my head with it, all sweaty from the softball game, God said, take a picture of this. So I took that picture. You can see the Star of David in the picture and there's a little baby one coming out of that pvc pipe of the of the living waters because he's living forever he overcame death team jesus overcame death rose on the third day i never understood all this joseph the depth of this missy the depth of this lord the depth of this richard now that i'm getting a deep understanding and grasp of this whose team are you going to be on are you going to worship the 56 billion dollar industry i like the yankees they win all the time so i want to get on the winning team i say get on the winning team man get on the winning team get your name in the book of life get your seat at the table bible says i'm preparing a, a, ta a seat at the table for you our prayer call is coming up here, so let me uh, 
finish off with a couple of good scriptures for all you beautiful brothers and sisters, dear parents, grandparents. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. Revelation 4.11, you, my brothers and sisters, are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, Father, and by your will they were created and have their being. You're created perfect in his image is what he's saying right there in that scripture in Revelations. He's revealing to you who you are. Revelations, he's revealing to you who you are. <clears throat> so I asked, what is worship? Worship and what does the Bible say about it? In simple terms, to worship is to praise and honor God for creating and blessing and loving us eternally, forever. While, we are, while there are different ways to glorify God, all forms of worship essentially share the love and reverence for our Father and His Son, Christ Jesus, Team Jesus. John 4, 23-24 says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are kind, they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in the truth. There's a lot to that scripture. I would suggest everybody read that one today. John 4, 23 to 24. I'm going to read it again one more time. Write it down if you get a chance. If you don't have the Bible with you, you can't look it up. Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, in the spirit, and in the truth. For they are kind of worshipers that the, they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in the truth. But we can't worship in the spirit if we're not connected. So it goes back to the connection. Revelation 4.11 You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. You, for, you, for you created all things and by your will... They were created and have their being. You see how the word creation keeps showing up? Honor, reverence, appreciation. No coincidence how all these things just tie right in together. All we have to do is pick it up. Like my childhood friend Billy Gibber said, you pick it up what I'm putting down? Are you guys picking up what he's putting down? Whose team are you on? What are you worshiping? Two more here, and we're going to rock and roll out of here and get on to our prayer call. <clears throat> let everything, Psalms 156, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And we give praise to the Lord. Thank you, Father. And this is going to sum it all up for you. Colossians 3, 14 through 17. And... Over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and to be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the what again? The Spirit singing to God, which we will be doing on the stage here in two weeks at the renewal, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, Team Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. That sums it all up. That was a perfect bow to put on the end of the Rises One Kingdom episode 27 podcast. Whose team are you on? What are you worshiping? And have
happy Father's Day. Heavenly Father, we worship and praise you this morning. I thank you, thankful for every single father out there right now. Some of them are going through some very challenging times. Some of them are basking in your glory because they've put in the works. They've plowed their fields. They've planted the seeds. Then Mother Nature watered them and you gave the increase. We are not to compare ourselves to other people. We are to praise and worship you and you only, Father. For you've created us perfect in your image. Fear not, saith the Lord, for I am with you. Walk it out. There's nothing to fear. Cast everything that was in the past behind you. Because it's not how you start. It's how you finish this game of life. I thank you, Dad. Al Shermer, and I thank you. I hope you received that message this morning. That came from the bottom of God's heart that he gave me. That you gave me. That Mom gave me. Upon my birth. I thank you all for joining us this week. For the Rise is One Kingdom episode 27 podcast has come to a close. Go in peace this day. Just love and serve yourself, the Lord, all your brothers and sisters. As he said, we are all one body. We are unity. We are community. We are the common unity. We are all one. We are all the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I honor and appreciate you, Father. I honor and appreciate all you, Father. Brother Skip, go out there and have fun today on the softball field. I love you, brother. I love all of you, brothers and sisters. Go out there this day. Honor every single father. And our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I love you, Jesus. Team Jesus all the way. I thank you and I appreciate each and every single one of you. We will see you next week, God willing. Have a blessed and fantastic Sunday. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Remember to sign up to get a seat in the renewal, because if you don't sign up and you show up, you may have standing room only. We're only getting so many seats. It's limited space. We would love to see you there. If you need some information, reach out to me. You can zap the QR code. gives you all the information and where we are to meet and what time, 3.30 on Saturday, the 29th of June. I look forward to seeing many of you there. You're going to have a renewed spirit. You're going to be in for an experience. And this is going to absolutely bless your lives is what I truly believe is my intention, our intention, as we come together to join to renew and worship a right spirit within us. Oh, Lord. Have a blessed and fantastic Father Days. See you next week. We'll talk to you soon. I love you all, and so does God. Peace.